What's happening, party people? And welcome back to another episode of Inside the Desert Oasis Room. Look who's inside the Desert Oasis Room today. Our friend Sonny Espondo, the winner of Tropical Shakedown, sponsored by Don Papa. Sonny, where are you at? Right here, right here. Yeah, yeah. Been doing a lot of stuff with Don Papa lately. We have, I feel like that's been my, half of my life recently, the last few years. Love it, love it. I'm excited that I have you here inside the Desert Oasis from now because we're gonna have some cocktails. Tell us about this drink you're gonna make. So, since you mentioned the competition, we will be making Lover's Rock, which was the award-winning cocktail that won at Tropical Shakedown in Long Beach. The very first one. I love it, Lover's Rock, one of my favorite cocktails ever. So you're gonna show us how to make this. Yes, and I will explain the ingredients, I'll explain the process behind it for in-house and high volume. I love it, this is the first. So. Having said that, I'm also going to put a link to that competition video so you can see what happened there. That was at Rose Mellows in Long Beach. We'll put that in the description below so you guys can watch that video as well and see Sonny take home the prize for this cocktail. I'm so excited. All right, lovers rock inside the Desert Oasis room. What a treat. Let's do it. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. Okay. So we're going to do egg white. You always do the egg white first because say in a high volume restaurant, okay. you put your spirit in first and you crack the egg over the tin, yolk could fall into the drink. Then oh, you're losing profit yeah, yeah, yeah. and you gotta restart the drink. Yeah. So you always put the egg white in first. Egg always. white in first. So we're gonna do about an ounce, an ounce and a half of egg white. Wow, all right. Right there. We're gonna add some raspberries in there. Not gonna lie, I forgot to muddle first, so we're gonna put this over here. That's okay. So about, I usually do, when I put fruit into my tins, I do it so it, you can't see the bottom of the tin anymore. Okay. So I've got a muddler down there, you got one. All right. All right. All right. And then in high volume, a lot of bartenders will look at it. If I'm busy, I'm gonna be, I need to go. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna be yeah. smashing it. Yeah. So we're gonna do the egg white. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Then we're gonna go citrus. I'm gonna do three quarters, 0.75 ounces of key lime. Not Persian key limes, lime. key limes. Key limes. Key limes okay. are much silkier, they're much more potent, they're, yeah, they're just better than Persian. They're, yeah, they're, they're stronger flavor, richer. Yeah. So uh, right here, we're using my version of Lover's Cream, which I call it, which is basically heavy cream, cream of coconut, and then any type of spice rum, but not too much, enough for like a dash okay. for when you blend it. It just gives the uh, cream much more complexity, right? Okay, all right. We're gonna do one ounce. So what do you call that? Lover's cream. Lover's cream. We just got a soft. There's, there's a dirty joke in there somewhere. Is there? You think so? <laughs> Knowing me, huh? Lover's cream, bro. Right. You know, I was getting a bunch of at the at the um, San Diego. They were saying it was like a party in their mouth. I was like, <laughs> Can you say that? I don't know. Say Lover's cream. This is a family show. This right. Family right. Show. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So. <laughs> okay. So we're going to the secret. All right. Uh, I actually forgot one more ingredient, sorry. So we actually put Mediterranean sea salt as well. All right. Like two, three dashes, not two, three too much. Two, three dashes of sea salt. So right now we have raspberry, egg white, we have lover's cream, we have pea lime juice with the Mediterranean sea salt. The secret to the whole drink is this right here. Okay. So this right here, gentlemen, is called lover's agave, which I invented. I don't know if someone else has it, but I'm calling it lover's agave because, but I wanted to put my culture behind it. Yeah. We use agave a lot in Mexico, yeah, yeah. some tequila, stuff like that. And so I didn't want to make a simple syrup. So I wanted to make, make it with agave. So I simmered guava paste, strawberries, and bananas. Wow. So I simmered it for about 15 to 20 minutes on medium heat. Equal parts? I do uh, five ounces strawberry, 10 ounces banana, and then two ounces of guava paste. Okay. I simmer about 10 to 15 minutes on medium heat. Then I put it into the strainer, smash it through, extract it, and then and then you add the agave. Because if you're trying to make a simple syrup and you're mixing in the sugar, it's very hard to control it. Yeah. And I got that tip off of the bar book. Okay. So you always make your juice and then you add the sugar. Okay. Because it's just way easier to control. This is the secret for the whole drink, is what makes the drink. I'm gonna do one and a quarter ounces, oh, or you can do quarter. one and two quarters. Okay. okay. Learn something new every day. Put All right. that over there, get this out of the way. Yeah. And then now, Shout out to Tomas de los Reyes, which helped me. To our homeboy Tomas, yes. Tomas de los Reyes from Don Papa. But you've done something to this 
I did, yeah. Right? It's not no ordinary bottle. Right. Ladies and gentlemen. Right. It is infused with habanero. Ooh, habanero. look at it. Look, this so don't one's be afraid. spicy. Don't, don't be afraid because a lot of people are saying it's too spicy. But I finally perfected it where it's just enough where it wouldn't kill okay. anyone. Okay. Even people who don't like spice. So what's the secret to that? How, how do we, if people want to try that at home. So you can do this with any spirit and then whiskey distillers do this. So when they make whiskey, they roll the barrels, right? Mm -hmm. So they roll it, flip it upside down. So when you're doing this, I learned this after three times making it. When you infuse a spirit with a certain type of spice or something, you want to move it every 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. You know, I did two habaneros to the whole bottle for 15 minutes and it is fine like that. Oh, 15 minutes, yeah. that's all it takes. Well, it's funny because the first time I made it, it took me about 32, it took me 32 a day. I yeah. mean, 30 minutes to a day, but it's because I was doing it wrong, right? Oh, okay. It also matters the volume of what you're putting into the jar. If you use a smaller jar, the infusion would be much quicker and much better because it's in the whole jar. Gotcha. And if you're flipping it, rolling it, right, right. moving it, right. everything's gonna be much faster and you can control it better. Right. Okay, all right. So we're gonna do two ounces. Okay. Two ounces. That's a that's a heavy pour. So it's tiki, my friend. Nice. Love it. Love it. All right. So we have everything. We have egg white. We have everything. The raspberries are the ingredients. Now it's time to shake. I'm gonna start getting these out the way. All right. Start getting our garnishes in order. Look at all this stuff. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Right, and then this is our glass. So if you want to make an original Lotus Rock, you have to have the yarn around the glass. Right. Two to three banana leaves. One banana leaf has to have a design. Right. So I'm going to hold this up yeah. to the camera so you guys can see that. Check it out. Cut the design into there and we've got like a little gecko in there. Right? Shout out to Edwin. He's uh, the artist that worked on the leaves. All right. So now we're going to add our lights. Thanks, Edwin. We're going to be ready to shake. Look at those fancy tins. And then when you shake, two tips. If you're working in bar and you want to speak to your guests, you shake down below so you can hear them. The Japanese does it. Also, when you shake, you never shake like this. You shake in emotion. Okay. It just frosts the drink much better. It gets everything in there much combined. And it just looks nicer. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know about the uh, figure eight as well, that right? figure eight gets the, the mix into every corner of the tin. So. Yes sir, so now we're gonna fill our glass with crushed oh. ice. All right. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Lovers rock inside the desert oasis room. And then when you're working with crushed ice, the drink can over flood really fast. So you fill it halfway, tap it, the liquid will drop and then you, re you put, it, put in the rest. Here we go. And then I always double strain for, for professionalism and not to get the ice chips in there, even though there's already ice in there. Look at that. So we're almost done. We just gotta do the garnishes. So another secret is a lover scream that I make. You're gonna do the same thing for the cream of the lover's cream, but you're gonna be uh, putting guava nectar and then a little bit of pink food dye to okay. give that nice rich color. Man, there's a lot of work that went into this. Drink. It was, let me tell you, it took, this drink took about six months. Yeah, right? so one of your buddies was telling me during that competition that you guys would play video games after work. Yeah. And yeah. he said you were so dedicated about this cocktail that you would tell them, sorry, I can't play tonight. I'm I mean, I'm working on this cocktail. Look where we're at now. Right, exactly. Right so, and all this attention to detail and the background and all that stuff is what got you the prize, right? I appreciate you. Yeah, man. all that, all that extra thought and all that extra, you know, going the extra effort, right? Yeah, extra yeah I mean, mile. you know, I love what I do, and I try to be different every time. I try yeah. to just, I try to evolve every time I work or the next drink. I'm actually working on a new drink which is a secret, but we'll get into that later. All right. So now we're gonna go into our garnishes. Right here we have, not just any type of powder, it's gonna be unsweetened cacao. It has to be unsweetened. Unsweetened cacao. Because the unsweetened okay. cacao makes better with the sweetened whipped cream we have here. And cinnamon. So you mix half and half, and you put in your little shaker right here. Very nice. And then like a little dash, not too much. You wanna be light. You don't wanna ruin the drink. Okay, that's part of the balance, right? Yes, sir. All right. 
And then it just makes, it just brings out the whipped cream that looks good. much better because that brown on the pink, it gives it a good color tone to it, yeah. or palette. And then you're gonna do toasted coconut crumble, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. You're gonna put it on top. You toasting that yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. And it, it's pretty good too, if you like to try it. People love eating it with the whipped cream. Mm. So now we're okay. almost done. We're gonna do one cinnamon stick to go with the other brown on top. Oh my God. And then you can do an edible flower or a raspberry. Here I'm gonna do a uh, raspberry. Beautiful. And then last but not least, the most important thing in the drink, your straw. Ellen, you go with bamboo straw. Love it. And then here, cheers, lovers rock. Lovers rock. Check that out. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm excited for you to try it. I mean, I was excited to make it again. Lovers rock inside the desert oasis room. How often do you make this drink? You know, it sells out every time I make it. So I, I literally have been making it for the past six months. I've made about over 500 servings of it. 500 servings. And this is the champion of Tropical Shakedown. All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. Oh my God. So good. This gets better every time you I know, drink it. You know, I, I perfected it yesterday and if you wanna get a little bit more original, I usually have a potion bottle on the side, but yeah. due to circumstances it couldn't be brought today. That's okay. But I did put cacao bitters in this potion bottle. Oh my God. So you have the choice to put it in your drink or keep it without. So let's talk about this. I can taste the sweet, I can taste the citrus, I can taste a little bit of the, and the thing is, again, we talked about this in the podcast, the balance, right? So yeah. I can taste the Don Papa, but it's not over, nothing's overwhelming on this. It's tropical it's dare I say desserty because it, it looks like a dessert drink but it's also a dinner cocktail believe it or not you, you can drink this with with dinner because it doesn't taste like a smoothie or anything like mm -hmm. that right very good very very much a treat excellent again thank you so much thank you for making me another lover's rock inside the desert oasis room and for all of you guys that want to make this at home we're gonna put the recipe in the description there so you guys can make that. Hopefully you'll be able to, you know, the thing about a bartender making their special drink mm -hmm. is it never quite tastes the same if you try it to does make it, it at home. You know, that's why I'm not trying to keep it a secret because I know other people can make it, but it just won't taste, it's like Don the Peach Comer and Trader Vic's, you know, they're Mai Tai, right. you just never right. have it like theirs, you get me? But it's there in history. Right, right, but make one at home and tell us in the comments what you think about it. Or better yet, if you want one from the guy who made it, Check him out at The Social List in Long Beach, and he'll make one for you right there. And I also do events, and I also have it in my packages, so if you want an event, I can bartend it. I drive pretty far, I travel. Mm. Instagram's underscore, man of the hour, underscore, underscore. I love it, I love it. Thank you again, brother. Of course, thank you. Appreciate you. Boom. Thanks for watching another episode of Inside the Desert Oasis Room. Follow us if you enjoy this kind of content. We also do stuff out in the field. We go to all the events, we go to the cocktail competitions, we go to uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. And if you want to help support the podcast, we've got a Patreon. Thanks again, party people. And until the next time, cheers and aloha.